Great. Okay. Welcome, everybody. This is the uh, March 21 Finance and Administration Committee meeting. My name is Jim Spear. This is Mike Salmonson, Mike Gaudini. We're the Finance Administration Committee. We have Matt West, uh, Borough Manager, Alan um, Gazzardo, Assistant Manager. And let's get to the agenda. First on the agenda is approval of February minutes. I move to approve the minutes of February 15, 2024 of the Finance and Administration. I'll second that. Okay. We vote? Yep. Vote. All good. Aye. Excellent. Minutes are accepted. Treasurer's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, at this time, the, all of the treasurer's report, the budget versus actual, were submitted to this committee for review. And I, was, I would be happy to answer any questions you might have. I just wanted to point out if uh, you are following along and looking at the percentages and looking at one that jumped out to me, and I'm hoping that it jumped out to you also, and that's under admin, managed IT service fees. We're at 190%. A budgeted because there was a 26 just over a $26,000 bill for scanning services of scanning old borough documents that had started in 2022 I think it was and this was the completion of that project and so it did exceed the budgeted amount of what or the contracted amount uh, was it by about $10,000 uh, but that was because there were other records that were forwarded to the scanning um, company for inclusion. And that was all prior to my tenure, so I can't um, answer any specific questions about that contract per se, um, just that the it was invoice, just the volume was, just the volume was much higher than originally contracted. So that's what's skewing that number. So if you back out that $26,000 payment, we'll be well in line. And this is all work that took place months ago, and we're just being built now, or what's the uh, arguably years ago. Also, <laughs> it's been a multi-year effort, okay. um, and we've been um, we've been provided the digital version of all of these records. Yeah. Now our our task is to go through them and make yeah. sense of them all yeah. because they're not necessarily um, archived in such a way that makes it easy for staff to get so. We've got the data, we just now have to uh, transform it into a usable format. I wonder if it makes sense to suggest that we hire some cheap summer help to perhaps index that in some way. I mean, I, I'd hate for you guys to be... Knowing what I remember of the piles of hard paper that were you know, in the small room over there and downstairs and everywhere else. Yes. Um, <laughs> if you'd like I, to walk down um, memory lane, yeah. the company actually delivered how many pallets? Four or five, six pallets yeah. of, of the records? If you'd like to go out to Public Works Garage and... Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, um, but I just wow. wonder whether it might be worth thinking about, you know, people that's looking a good for idea. summer jobs, 10 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour. I'm guessing a lot of the sorting that was going to take, like a professional eye say, yeah, that's, you know, to identify what it is, to recognize the importance. Yeah, unfortunately, like when you're going through documents like that, you do have to have kind of an understanding of like yeah. what each document is. It's not something that we can just pass on to like an intern mm -hmm. per right. se. Because I guess they're they're not you know. Were, were, was there any sort of rough grouping? Was it like oh this box is probably like yeah. plans or whatever? Yeah. And this mm -hmm. box is, or it's just all over the map. They are they are organized by subject matter at least. But the, the best they could. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So one of the issues that we had when we were going through this, this has been going on so long that it was one of my projects that I was working on when I was here mm -hmm. a long time ago, was that you would have boxes that it would be commingled. It wouldn't be, right. okay, this box is financial records. It might be a quarter of financial records with a menu of the Greeks with, you know, or maybe a year's worth of menus from the Greeks and then some payroll records and then maybe a subdivision application. So it was like, all yeah. over the place. Mm -hmm. So you would actually have to go through and touch everything to validate, oh, yep, we don't need to scan that, or yes, we have to scan this one. Mm -hmm. So great. long story, yes, it sort of is, and I think it will help us navigate it. We just haven't had, had the time to do to really do a deep dive into it yet. Gotcha. That's coming. Great. That was the only big oddball 
um, that I wanted to bring to your attention. All right. Um, anything else on the treasurer's report? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Okay. Back up to the agenda. Next on the agenda. Action items for council. Schedule of bills. So we've got uh, the schedule of bills was before this committee to review ahead of this evening's meeting. I was wondering if there were any questions that this committee had. How are we doing in terms of real estate tax revenue? I was a little confused by that. So go back to the treasury. Report. Yeah, that would be a part of the treasury okay. report. If you look at the first section of it. Um, if you scroll to page three, the first section, the income, right. if you look at that, um, the second line, 300.100 real estate tax is current. So we're at 9.3% through February. So March and April are the big, yeah, the big months. So you're going to see that, the discount, right? you're gonna see that number jump dramatically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every day Regina's getting a lot of mail right now. <laughs> it's your box, so. Okay. Yeah. All right, anything else? Okay. Do we need to, how are we going to do this? Do we recommend, vote to recommend it? I would um, uh, entertain a motion to recommend that it gets forwarded to council for consideration. Okay. I'll, make... I'll move to recommend that uh, scheduled bills for general sewer, solid waste, capital, Highway and what's that? Green funds um, be forwarded to council on the community's recommendation. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor of that? Yes. Excellent. Very good. Okay, on to the main show. <laughs> or one of them. Uh, discussion items rules of procedure of borough council. Why don't we turn it over to Michael? Uh, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to. Okay. I'm happy to discuss. Um, this item, I think, uh, initially came up because uh, the chair had recommended taking a look at the rules with an eye toward some of the new technology that we have, like virtual participation, um, and and addressing any gaps that might occur in terms of what's the process for if someone blinks out in a meeting or. Um, you know, any number of things along those lines. Um, so I was also taking a look back, uh, reviewing our council rules, and I noticed a number of areas where I thought there might be gaps, a number of areas where, uh, where our practices in the years uh, since that maybe have diverged from what our standard practice and rules are, and so I think it's always good as just a matter of process to match your practice to your rules. Um, and areas where there might need to be kind of other sorts of updates. Um, it also, just kind of in terms of the, the way that the rules read, um, I suspect that probably they were, you know, there was a base set that was adopted in whatever year, and then over time it was edited, and uh, I think that the sum total now is if you're a new user reading those rules, there are certain things that are kind of scattered throughout the rules that might be better um, organized in, um, a different fashion and so um, I thought it would be good kind of for us to take a holistic look at that um, both kind of for the benefit of, of council now but also for the benefit of any future council members and for the benefit of, um, of staff you know everyone that's involved in council meetings at, at some point yep. um, so that's yeah <laughs> so that's great so Michael has gone produced his own pre-draft, I, I guess it is, of, uh, of some, a lot of suggested changes. Yeah, flagged and, some issue areas. Yeah, and Mike and I have had a copy of this to make uh, our own comments on. Um, and how do you want to do this? Should we just go start at the beginning and go through it, or do you want to talk about bigger issues? I figured it would make sense to kind of talk about like high-level yeah. um, approach to you know, flag some major issue areas and a high-level approach going forward to kind of like, what are we going to review 
bring back to the committee for discussion, like how do we proceed from here? Um, also, I don't know if um, uh, the manager has any kind of comments on any of this either, or maybe not, but I wanted to open up the floor if you had any thoughts. A couple, um, none, that, none that are significant, granted, I have not gone through it with any fine tooth comb. I think there's a, there are some things that I've seen that procedurally, think of how we do things and then how it's uh, listed here that we might just need to reorder some things so it flows logically. But you know, I think it's really good to have this in a document that we can all refer to, especially for council members to refer to this as, okay, this is it, it, procedures, this is how we do things, this is how we enact business. So. I really appreciate you taking the time to put this first draft together and, and um, you know, Jim and you know, working on it together and collaborating. It, it, it's a really good start. Yeah. And, and I'll agree with Michael that it seems like there's just like pieces got stuck in over time mm -hmm. in weird places that just don't make sense. So, you know, you're referring to something that's over here and then it's in four sections later, there's something there that's basically talking about the same thing in somewhere else, and just feels like a document that kind of needed. I don't think we started there. You know, I think we started with the idea of what are we going to do about the fact that there's nothing really in there about remote participation, and um, you know, that's kind of I think where Jim started. Because, and then you know, when we looked at the document, oh well, Michael looked at the document first and was like. I think there's more to go <laughs> to yeah. do here than just some, think about our public comments. There are some so. glaring area issues that I felt needed attention, including the remote participation and the technology. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I would really like to look at our public comment procedure. Um, I think that's a natural fit for this. Uh, I should mention that we've also been looking at some other boroughs in the area. I've attended a couple of other council meetings in the area and had contacts with some uh, other borough council people in various boroughs to see how they how they do things in their borough, how they manage their technology and their accessibility and their comment period and such. So I have to start. I don't know if you all got my document this afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's is it. We have a chart in progress uh, of um, just uh, how we compare to other boroughs on a number of technology and comment. Points. Um, I think that is probably not over. I would, I would like to contact some more municipalities and, and, and uh, do a wider sampling. So if anyone has more names of more boroughs for me, uh, right now, uh, I think uh, maybe North Wales is a good one. Uh, West Conshohocken might be a good one. Um, I think. Well, I think five is pretty adequate. Yeah. Honestly. I mean, it's. Yeah, so what are yeah, we just yeah, the ones at Jane, Town, Swarthmore, Conshohocken, and, and Bridgeport. Yeah, I mean, you've got a mix of sizes that, oh, well, they're generally about the, well, Conshohocken's a lot bigger in terms of population, but um, kind of similar makeups to us, like definitely Bridgeport. Mm -hmm. um, Jenkintown, yeah, I think that's pretty similar. Yeah. Uh, I actually don't know Swarthmore that it's well, but. Kind of, it's pretty similar to us in the sense of. You know, it's down in Delaware County, but it kind of has that condensed downtown area the way we do, and then, you know, just kind of suburban community around it. The difference is it's a big part of the borough is taken up by the college, so that's one yeah. slight difference. But, but um, I, think the, I think the five that you picked are good samples. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So. Um, yeah. So I guess, like, in my mind, there's, there's, you know, some of some of the things that kind of I think I flagged for discussion are logistical within the document, right? Like you reorganize it, but the content of those things are the same. Um, then there's some where I think there's actually like some conversation that needs to take place. Well, and then I guess the second bucket, like maybe like sub bucket of that, would be things where we're really kind of like, we're changing some of the content, but we're doing so to match it with our practice. So clearly it, we feel that our practice is good in a certain way. Um, and so we can you know, have some sort of conversation about that. There's other spots where 
Um, it probably, you know, if we're going to be changing other things substantively, probably need some sort of public conversation around um, whether to go this direction or that direction yeah. or um, whatnot. And, and a lot of those things involve, you know, the technological pieces that you flagged, um, what happens if a council member blinks out of a meeting. Um, and uh, there was, I noticed that there was also um, gaps around uh, procedures in certain areas that seemed like you would really want procedures if that thing came along, right? So one of the big ones I flagged in there was, kind of says, okay, the council president, you know, serves at the pleasure of council. Um, seems like that you would probably, if you ever get into a situation where a council president is not, no longer going to be serving at the pleasure of council, I assume you're in a pretty contentious situation, it probably means you need some sort of procedure to guide you through that process. Now, like, what's the probability of that happening is really low, but it's one of those things where it's low probability, but like high risk if you land in that, and you need something kind of like a structure to guide you through it. So there were some areas like that where it was, uh, another one where it's, um, you know, President Pro Tem is kind of mentioned, mentioned as a thing that exists, and then that's basically it. It's not mentioned again. Um, so some of those areas where there are gaps where basically you need some sort of sub substance to fill that out and explain things that exist. Um, so those were kind of the three large buckets, at least in my head, when I was looking at it. I think, you know, in, a lot of it's internal to us that the public won't necessarily care about, um, except that we want to make sure that we're following the rules so that if there is some contentious issue, we can say, no, well, this is how we decide these things. You know, I think the one thing that I really do want to make sure that we discuss with the public in particular is both the, any potential changes to public comment as well as remote participation. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we sort of stumbled into how to participate remotely through COVID. Not, not just the public, but members of council too. And, um, you know, that without any rules or guidance or whatever whatsoever, I think it was all, you know, kind of on the fly based on necessity. And, you know, that necessity is passed. So certainly um, it, we should be setting up those rules and, and making sure that people understand what they are. Yeah, and um, I think it can't hurt to, to draw either as part of this document or as a separate document, maybe uh, a posted guidelines for public comment. Mm -hmm. Once we work through that whole thing, you know, it's something that people could read through, you yeah. know, to know how best to interact with the meetings, how to, you know, how to get questions answered, how to deliver their opinion effectively, you know. Um, uh, I, uh, in that thing I sent around today, I, I just included Contra Hawkins' policy on public comment, which is very thorough, um, just as an example of the things they feel are important to cover. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So I don't know how we you know, let the public know that we're thinking about those things. Like, do we include it in the Bro newsletter to say, hey, we're as part of our revisions of looking at this, we're also potentially thinking about, yeah, you know, setting out guidelines so, and rules for participation. Here are the things that we want, that we think need to be considered. Right. You know, I, we appreciate your input. I think we can at least take another month or two on this. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You know. I'm just thinking next step. I think. Right. I'd so, like to put it out there. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, what might make sense as a next step is. If we, for the next meeting, say, create like a short list of um, things that require some sort of decision point, mm -hmm. things that aren't just, you know, moving things around right. to, to yeah, establish yeah. logical framework. That's good. Um, and then we could discuss kind of like those short list of decision point items yeah. at the next Committee meeting? I don't know. Does that make Do sense? Do you envision that we would discuss them with an eye to making a recommendation on them, or to send them on to the full council? Um, I guess 
we could do either. If we feel like we reach some sort of conclusion, then we could always leave that open, or we could just discuss it and continue the discussion at the next committee meeting, right. or at what makes yeah. most sense to y'all. I mean, if we don't get a consensus, then we can say, here's our concern without a recommendation. I, I think you can mix and match, right? Depending on yeah. the, like, so we have a recommendation to fix this. Mm -hmm. We have this concern. We don't have a specific recommendation given it to council as a whole to discuss, right. but here, here are the alternatives, or here are our thoughts. So I think definitely the most important thing is just identifying the question. Yeah, you know that it, you know that's something that deserves attention and some thought. What if, um, what if at the next meeting we discuss those things, we get our ideas together, we'll have you know we'll have a proto version of the minutes, and then we'll we can give those ideas to the manager and the solicitor mm. in case they need to flag any issue areas within that. Yeah. Um, beforehand, um, so that way we had a chance to discuss them here. They have a, a chance to review them and provide comment. Oh, this might actually be hard to do in practice or whatnot. And then um, I guess it could come back to us at the next committee meeting, where we could just forward it along to other yeah council. So about starting that list of questions, is that something we should start like right now in this meeting, or is it something we should like submit to you over the course of the next month? Um, I guess we could do either. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't sure like how much time we had. Well, I guess this is the yeah. is this the last item on our agenda for today? I don't have much to offer with the capital improvement plan, so that I can give you an update now. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think we have time. Time? Yeah, we have time. Leave some room for public comment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jim, when you asked, when you made the tour to all of these other municipalities, mm -hmm. did you also inquire how many of them have a manual and rules of procedure for their borough councils? No. Hmm. No, I could. I think that would be valuable also. Okay. Because this is, I'm not familiar with many that have this. Maybe mm. it's just me not mm. talking about it, but mm. this is unique. And I'd, I'd be mm. curious to see what other municipalities have and how they handle it. Huh. Interesting. So from the heading on it, it looks like this has been around a while, you know, that different versions of this have been around a while right? and seen edited, like in, you know, intentionally. So I don't know whose idea <laughs> it was to, to have these or why. Um, my understanding is that they're not legally binding, you know, and they can be... I like it. You don't like it? Don't get me... Oh, okay. Yeah. I think it's valuable. Mm -hmm. I'm a policy and procedures mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. I'm a big process guy. And mm -hmm. the more processes that we can have in place is great. Mm -hmm. I would just... I say that in, in wondering if other municipalities have it, what do theirs look like? Mm -hmm. And how are they constructed? How much detail do they go into? Okay. And if they exist. Let me put that on a list of stuff to accumulate. Yeah, I can go back to the Swarthmore Jenkins mm -hmm. folks and ask them. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we can devote like 10 or so minutes yeah. to this right now? Or? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Because like a lot of the, many of the things like organization that's covered under the Pennsylvania yeah. Borough Code. Yeah, right. And so, it's, like, it's rehashing, mm -hmm. like, you know, date of organizational meeting. Yeah, that's that's standardized, that's covered. So if we could not focus on those things okay. and get into those things that might need a little more discussion yeah. you know, on how we handle it, I think that would be the best yeah. use of our time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think the two big ones are what we've listed here. You know, public comment and remote participation. Um, let's see. Should we I, zoom to that yeah. section right now? I mean, yeah. not zoom, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go watch my yeah. watch my words. I uh, think it might. Can we start with the remote part first? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see if I can I gotta pull it up again. Yeah. Did all those comments come through? Okay. Michael on the. Well, I'm trying to. Let me see. 
I assume. So. Which was the section on? Uh, I'm not the chart. Hmm? Oh, here it is. Hmm. Well, I went to open it, it says, request access. So now I've requested access. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is what keeps <laughs> happening on this document. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. who's, get, who's getting that request? Which document was it? It's the one that has Michael's original comments, Jim, and my overlay comments on top of that. And it seems like every time somebody puts an overlay comment, it gets somehow restricted. Oh, really? You can't get back into those? Uh, it says, sorry, you don't have access. It was very apologetic. <laughs> well, I don't think I'm going to do this. Um, are you using that link that I sent out on the 21st? Mm -hmm. Really? Well, do you want to, if you have it open, do you want to run? Yeah. You want to be? Okay. Quarterback? Sure. Sure. Um, but you're going to have to. Where are, uh, didn't you have all of the um, remote participation stuff in one section? Where is that? Under section 10. Section 10. There's, I think, um, there's the, the public one and then there's the council member one. And those, I can't remember, they may be in different sections. Rules of procedure. Yeah. Oh yeah, so this is public comment, uh -huh. um, virtual public comment, and then there was a, virtual participation of council members. Ah, okay. And that's where we want to start? Uh, whichever you think. Okay. So I'm the only one who can get this document over? Really? <laughs> Same. I'm looking okay. at the one. I can look, look at March. March one. All right. I will just read through it then. We're starting at K. Section 10 under, what letter is that? K? On oh, page 12. L. Yeah. This is March 14th, right? This is the one that was attached. I attached on the 21st. Yeah. It's the one that's sitting in the, the, com the committee folder, right? Oh, that's another way to get to it. Here, I will just start reading. Okay. Section 10. Virtual participation. Council members may virtually participate in meetings by means of telecommunications devices uh, in accordance with requirements of 8 PACS 1001. The following rules govern virtual participation by council members. General rights and privileges. Council member participating virtually has the same rights and privileges as members physically present except that they will not count toward a quorum unless otherwise allowed, as provided in 9 PACS 1001C1. Technical difficulties during action. Following rules govern a situation in which a council member participating virtually experiences technical difficulties that would prevent them from participating in any portion of the meeting in which the chair has opened the floor for motions or is called for a vote. And then under, also under 2, uh, A, council authority to act during technical difficulties. So should we just kind of, rather than okay. reading through, yeah. Yeah. should we kind of like, so basically this was like, um, this was the exact, uh, or one of the exact issues that you raised mm -hmm. in terms of what happens if there's a council member at the meeting virtually and then they blink out of existence. Um, and so I tried to take a stab at answering that question that you had raised. And my guidepost was kind of, you know, first and foremost, 
if a quorum of the body is present, then it has the authority to act, um, regardless of, of technical difficulties or anything along those lines. But So that's kind of like the, the baseline. Mm -hmm. And then I think the question about that is, okay, well, is there any, do we provide any sort of special consideration as to, um, you know, that person wanted to be present for a vote, or how do we handle that? And so, um, I think, and this may not may not be the perfect way to handle answering that question, but the, the place I kind of landed when I started to think through that was um, that, okay, well, council itself can decide whether to, you know, table the motion until later in the meeting, um, or just proceed, right? Because it might be, it, you, someone might have blinked out of existence in a thing where they didn't really, you know, the meeting could continue, mm -hmm. they weren't really, or it might be something that they really wanted to participate in. Um, so I kind of put some thoughts down as to how that would be handled, but the, you know, the ultimate goal would be that council could basically determine whether to continue or whether to, you know, take up the item later. Mm -hmm. um, that was my starting point. Yeah, so I guess that goes to the council person's right to be recognized and when they're participating virtually and they have technical difficulties which remove them from the meeting virtually, are they just absent at that point? Or are, uh, you know, or is there going to be a workaround for them? Well, I guess if, if they're not at the, if they're unable to make a motion because they're unable to access the meeting, then they couldn't make that motion. Yeah. Right? So that would be, I mean, I think it's the pro, like the proxy for this, right, is that if there are other council members there yeah. that want to make that motion right. out of consideration to the member who blinked out of the meeting, then that's the body acting, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, rather than, I mean, it would be odd, right, if we, if we, Delegated the authority of the agenda to to a single individual, right? If if the individual participating virtually then had the sole authority to okay. to move an item around by the mere fact that they have blinked out of the meeting, we're effectively delegating that to a single individual. So, kind of my thought, my thinking was, okay, well, if council as a body wants to move items around on the agenda or whatnot, then the body has that authority. So as the governing body of the borough. The flip side of that is imagine a contentious That's council that has say. factions, you know, and the, the person um, had intent, you know, the person who participated virtually had intended to vote a certain way. And if that person is removed from the meeting, you know, someone may, you know, there may be a new majority physically available in the council room. Well, right? the flip side of that is what if you know, what sort of gamesmanship does that get into? If I realize that I can get an item postponed by participating virtually and then I blink myself out of the meeting, in that sort of scenario, mm -hmm. I've just kind of weaponized the rules in a really weird way. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, like, I think, like, and that's, and like, like, once it gets to the contentious issues, yeah, that's yeah. where the core guiding principle right. of council is a body acting. Mm -hmm. Like, that's kind of like the lightning rod in my, okay. in my, that's so, the guidepost, I thought. Yeah. So if the idea is, you know, we want to have the rules be as clear as possible for the contentious, you got 3-3 three, three, and that person online is the fourth, I think we want to add a sentence that says, like, the presumption is that you wait until, to see if that person can get back in before the conclude, before a motion to adjourn. So that, Basically, it forces everybody to go through the agenda. Hopefully, that person comes back on. It kind of avoids the gamesmanship on the one side. I don't think you can avoid the gamesmanship the other way if the person intentionally drops out. But at least if you say, if the person drops out, the agenda item should be tabled until, and as long as the person comes back prior to adjournment. What the if there are a bunch, what they if they're a bunch of votes vote. stacked up, you know, that are, that, uh, you know, do they all just get tabled until the last well, time? You, in theory, you don't know which ones are going to come out 3-3 three, three or 4-3. Or I mean, so we probably have a sense, but... Anyway. I appreciate the spirit. Yeah, and, go on. But 
maybe you're making it too complicated, and that if it's a real vote that you need, you yeah. got to be here. Mm -hmm. Why are you making exceptions? This is a yeah. this oh. is a, this yeah. is an opportunity for if you can, if you can be available online, great. Yeah. But if you drop off, and the vote yeah. happens, yeah. we're not going to hold. That is not. Yeah. I don't recommend you holding votes until somebody else can join. Mm -hmm. That's just not a good mm -hmm. practice. Yeah. When there's a motion and a vote, or a motion yeah. in a second on the table, take that motion at that time unless you yeah. have a vote to table it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm uneasy creating a mechanism that will be untenable. Yeah. The simplest, simplest, simplest approach is the, the borough code, Pennsylvania borough code says you have to have a quorum of people here physically. Right. Yeah. So yeah. If, you can conduct business. Right. If you are online, if you can't make it, that's on you yeah. as a council member. Yeah. yeah. And we, or I'm sorry, you as a body, will be like, look, if you can if you can log in and you are present, great. Right. If not, there is no guarantee yeah. that we will count your vote if there's a glitch and, and you aren't able okay. to cast a vote. Yeah. And I think that that is effectively what I've written in here. And the only reason I wrote that separately from, like, just had it by, is just so that if future council members coming in, like, they understand that that is, that, that, that they could miss a vote. It's a convenience for them. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. extended to them. If yeah. they can't, yeah. if they can't, I mean, yeah. if it's a major vote, yeah, you should be here. Right. Really yeah. should be. Yeah. Well, so just to back up half a step, what do you think about the idea of including at all in the rules that just uh, by you know, normal circumstances, someone participating remotely does get to vote? Is that I believe okay that would be okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. To establish that, mm -hmm. I think that would hold yeah. up and say, look, you will be provided the opportunity to vote. The Pennsylvania Borough Code. Does this, does allow for that yeah. because the motion will continue because you already have a quorum physically present so mm -hmm. it will move on. Yeah. So yeah, I think there's value in saying yes if if able to establish a connection and yeah. the connection remains and you're available during that motion then yes that vote will count. Mm -hmm. So here's the here's the follow up question: Do you get disqualified from voting if during the discussion? You know, between the time of motion and discussion, uh, you don't you drop out and you don't get to be a participate in okay, the deliberation. It's a okay. Mm -hmm. No, but I'm saying, so they drop out during the deliberation mm -hmm. part. Should they still be allowed to vote if they come back in before the vote occurs? If they are present at the time of the vote, okay. Just at the be, time of the vote, they should be um, mm -hmm. given the opportunity to vote. Uh -huh. So then I think we've got to write it in there specifically to say it's a convenience and we mm -hmm. won't, you know, unless there's a formal motion to table the, the motion itself, right, that if they're not present at the time of the vote, they won't be able to vote. Yeah, and I think, and what I think, yes, um, and I think I'd also specify that if you're tabling an item due to that, then you should be specifying a specific time that it's going right, to come back up. Um, There's just some things that made me uncomfortable, and you know, if they're if they're able to rejoin, they may announce the manner in which they had intended to vote. For so I I included that just because it, it is pretty standard in other legislative bodies for members who miss a vote that they can put into the the meeting minutes there. Intent it doesn't affect the outcome. We we don't have to do that. Oh, I had included I, that because that is I, a that it's if I'm in other legislative bodies. It's more it's more of a public record. Yes. As a public I record, see, okay. not not relating to not affecting the outcome. Yeah. It's political, yeah. not does jurisdiction. Yeah, I was just I was sense. concerned that you were going to reopen the vote. It's like, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Does that, that go sense. for people okay. who are completely absent as well? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we should. I just thinking not. I mean, because I think that, like, at that point, you know, people could come back, like, three months later and be like, oh, I actually add this into the minutes. And, like, the way I've seen, the way I've seen it operate in practice, right, it, normally in, like, a, a state house or something, is a, a member coming back in and saying, I, you know, I stepped out in the hall, we missed this, like, please, like, I'm listing my intent. And then it gets listed. But I don't think they normally reopen the record after the fact. I think you had to have, like, come back into the meeting while the meeting is still, like, before you've adjourned. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the note I made on 
your draft on that is that people who are present don't normally get to state why they're, why they're voting, right? So No, they, it's how they're voting, right? Not why they're voting. Yeah, but they don't get to make a little statement saying, you know, I voted no because, you know, you can. Can. You can. Can. people do. You can do that? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Yeah, you just can't make that statement, I think, like, during the voting process itself. Mm -hmm. But you can make during, it during deliberation. Right? You can make it during deliberation. Right? Okay. And that's at the discretion of the president. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of yeah. how much discussion that the person will allow. Yeah. And if they want to open it up for yeah. that type of comment. Mm -hmm. So, I, yeah, so I think we should just say, you know, prior to adjournment, right? Of that particular yeah. meeting, if the person is able to come back, they can see yeah. what their intent would have been. But if they can't, then just yeah, right then, along. then they can go mm -hmm. post it on Facebook or whatever, or, you know, know. know, or on their own page, <laughs> whatever, you know, like they could just tell people some other way. It, the, you know, the spirit of a meeting is to be here and be present right. and be yeah. active in it. Mm -hmm. I don't want this to be used as a way for someone to do an end around. To not, to not vote, and then well, I would have. Like, mm -hmm. It's a little disingenuous. Well, mm -hmm. that's that's why I want to do it be prior to adjournment, so it's not like somebody can do it, see which way the wind blows after the vote, yeah. you know, and see how pissed off the community is, or yeah. whatever, and, or how wonderful they think it is, and then say, oh, I would have voted that way. Yeah. I had just been there. And also the like the. Normal legislative procedure, right? Is that if you as a body are rock and rolling and everyone feels good, and you can continue along, right? The rules are there to provide, like, you know, prevent you from careening off a cliff, right? If right. you need the rules, you can, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna follow these to the letter and use them in the exact way. But, you know, if the, if the body feels comfortable, then I think that's a pretty standard. And again, I'll reiterate. It's the council president's role to yeah. run the meeting yeah. and to establish that decorum and to navigate these rules. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, I just think it's important for that to continue to be um, reemphasized. Yeah. That these don't work without the management of the council president managing this document. Yeah. Is there a way to incorporate yeah. rules or What's an acceptable reason for not being here and wanting to participate remotely? That is a part of the Pennsylvania Borough Code. It, it specifies for what reasons, and they are. That's good that's there. I think we should enforce that, right? Illness, illness, disability, yeah. care of ill or newborn and members of immediate family, emergency, and family or business travel. That's it. I think that we should be able to ask for that, the you know, proof of that, if someone's wanting to participate remotely. Really? Because it's in there. It's in state code. So we should, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know about proof. Like, I don't need a doctor's note, but they should probably state on the record. Right. I think we should say yeah, why they're going to miss Why it. state on the record, according to uh -huh. borough code, the, re the reasons for not being yeah. present. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I, I don't want them to say, I'm taking care of my dying grandmother. They can just say, <laughs> I'm taking care of a male relative. Right? Yeah. I think, it, I, and I, it, the barrack code is pretty broad, so I feel like no one's going to really have a, a problem meeting, you know, family or business travel, right. for instance. Yeah, so that's you know, like fine. <laughs> it seems like you could fit just about anything into those, you know, yeah. if you're sick or an emergency. Yeah. It's really nice. And you're yeah, not just staying at home and, and right. saying it's too cold out tonight, I don't want to go down. Some there. explanation I think should just be needed. It doesn't have to be like, you know, you don't have to provide like a doctor's note or something, mm -hmm. but it's helpful and it kind of discourages people from trying to participate remotely, you know. I'm saying you should be able to participate remotely if you have any circumstances come up, but I think sometimes it seems like it's just a convenience factor where they don't want to be like physically present for whatever reason and yeah. it gives them a, I at least want them to prove why they yeah. should be able to yeah. participate remotely. Or at least or say it. At least publicly state it. Yeah. yeah. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that makes sense. And to the extent possible, they should arrange beforehand saying, hey, look, I'm sick. I would like to participate remotely. You know, are you going to have a quorum if I don't show yeah. up in person? Right? So, I mean, that's just, at least that's a courtesy. Right? And again, I believe this is where that member would communicate directly to the council president mm -hmm. yep. and say, look, I cannot attend this evening due to XYZ. Yep. 
And the council president says, yep, okay, sounds good. And then when we take the roll call at that point, council president says, so and so will be joining us remotely because of such and such. Should we? Yeah. Can we write that into the rules that it's preferred that they prearrange remote participation? I mean, we can, or that could just be something that's. I guess if you go either way, right? Like mm -hmm. at, at a certain point, it's like you know what what level of detail is too much. But if it's also just if we think it's good enough that they they, they should know to talk yeah. to the council president, and that they might not otherwise know that we can put that in. Since it's, because it's important. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Since it's. Directly important to the meeting that right. it's yeah, we yeah, have yeah, that's a, here. Yes, that's you know, we don't want to be yeah. surprised <laughs> that we don't have a quorum. That would yeah. really bite. Yeah, yeah. And, and in addition right. to that, could you also add the borough manager? I'd say the borough manager and the council president. Because we need to know. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That makes total sense. So we have about 13 minutes yeah. until 7. So Okay. Um, yeah. I think we should hang it up here unless it's more technical. Yeah. Do, do we have any public? Well, so we do oh, have no. a hand raise. Yeah, somebody so. like we'll definitely move on to public comment. I wanted to know yeah. if you yeah. Any, yeah. anything else naturally to talk about right now. No, I think that's a that's a natural okay. topic. So what are we gonna? How are we gonna assemble questions? Maybe we should. I think we should generally look through. Yeah. Kind of flag. Items for to surface for a discussion at the yeah. next meeting, so we'll, and then we can talk about those things. Okay, so we'll just stack up our own questions, or should we send them? Yeah, to we stack them up. Okay. okay. Yeah. What do, does does that that works? Okay. Excellent. Do you want to look at this independently of us and stick your own comments and questions in? If we can give you permission. <laughs> Well, it's weird. Now I'm in it, I, and I don't understand. I was able to get into the document. Yeah. I'm not, I, I tend not to use the links because the links can become problematic. Yeah. And what? If you save it in the SharePoint folder, it's easy okay. to navigate to that folder and then just open it from there. Okay. Yeah. So okay. as long as that is the correct document, the, I'm okay with looking at that one. The problem we had was that anytime one of us opened it up to make comments on it, it created a new version of the document that was like local to our own folder. So now there are like four or five different versions of this document. So that's why we got to get it on the SharePoint actual drive. Yeah. Oh, and because I think when because you were sending user. it as a attachment to an email, but, and then I open the attachment, and then I'm saving it. I think it's what how Microsoft Word does it. That okay. anytime anybody tracks changes independently, it saves a separate file because that's your I changes. See. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm only going off the one that is currently listed. I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen yours and Jim's comments. These were only Michael's. Ah, okay. All right. So if you could just save your copies, the most current copies that you have on your computers, just save it to that SharePoint folder. Okay. Okay. I gotta figure out how to do right. that. Okay. Great. Okay. Nice job. This is going well. Okay. Shall we move on to what is uh got public? Right, we've got capital improvement budget. I don't have anything to discuss. Nothing. That. Review of ongoing projects. I don't think we'd have any. Public comment. Let's get to it. We have someone in public comment, perhaps. Anybody? Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you calling on me? Because yep. I'm the only one with my hand raised. Yeah, please. Hi. Uh, Gigi Moffat, 206 Wayne Avenue. Um, on March 1, I uh, emailed uh, the borough manager. Uh, with a question regarding what I believe, I think it happened in 21 or 22, I'm not really sure because it's all kind of a blur, uh, that council passed legislation that allowed developers to not hold 10% of the residences that they would be building um, and hold those, not hold them, for those who needed um, low income or um, accessible housing, and that the borough enacted the state allowed loophole that says these developers could pay into a certain fund and whatever that amount was and um, my question for Mr. West and he uh, very kindly answered me four days later saying that he wasn't aware of any details of the legislation and I'm not finished yet so my question's not there and I'm really sorry. Um, <laughs> he wasn't as aware of the legislation and so he had no information uh, regarding this fund. So finance administration at the time I think was under Ms. Rickards, so I'm not quite sure. I think none of you were there at the time, so I'm sorry. But um, the legislation cannot be found, the fund name cannot be found, an amount cannot be found, 
And so we're trying to figure out if it was indeed enacted, and if it was under the state rules, you have to tell us how much is in it, it has to be a line item, and you have to tell us what your future plans are with those dollars. So those are my questions. So thank you. Gigi, were you on council at the time? No, because I would never have voted for something like this, Mike, okay. but thank you. Okay. Well, <laughs> no, it was brought up several times in my, in, in my time, and we always killed it. Um, but um, Mr. George apparently made a statement and said yeah. that I'm he just, wanted this to happen. And so from, from my understanding is it was passed uh, perhaps when Ms. Pananopoulos was vice president. But I can't find the legislation. I can't find the dollar amount. I can't find anything. So I'm trying to figure out maybe it was voted down, but I, I don't know. I'm so just, we're asking finance and administration, but Mr. West, who presented the budget, should probably have that answer. Yeah. But unfortunately, he says he does not. I couldn't find anything. I haven't mm -hmm. seen anything related to that. Yeah, I don't remember seeing it in the budget present. These guys weren't here, the other two, for the budget, because they got yeah. put in jail. I don't remember seeing us. Uh, since I was new to the budget process, I looked at it very, very carefully. I don't remember seeing a designated fund in the budget. So, uh, but I asked you when, anything? whether you were on because I'm trying to figure out who's the right person to ask. Rickards. Uh, so, we'll, we'll <coughs> see what we can do to track it down. We want to track out the ordinance first and see. Yeah. I mean, if it wasn't, we'll look at the backup materials yeah. from the meeting. Okay. Yeah. That GG mentioned. Yeah. Then can look around. Yeah, because we should sure come through this subcommittee, so we should be able to at least find. Some discussion of it in the minutes. And Gigi, when when was that? I think it's twenty one. I think it was twenty one, twenty two. I'm sorry, it's all kind of a blur since the bad thing happened, but I, I really do think it was in twenty two. So maybe Alan and Alan, you brought up some excellent points during the discussion. So kudos to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, okay. we'll figure it out. Good. I had looked for ordinances yeah. when this request came in, hence the four-day response yeah. time. What is this? Yeah. I'm trying to find it. Yes. I could not find yeah. it. So, not to say it's not there, but I have not seen any financial, any funding, any money related to this. So I'm curious to see how it was supposed to be set up. Yeah. Okay. So. And we do have we do have like a place where the ordinances and resolutions yeah. live yes. normally. Yeah. yeah. Everything, everything that's uh, been passed by ordinance is in our code. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the borough code was actually just updated, so if, it, if we did adopt it, it should be in there, and that's yeah, all online. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks, Steve. We'll, we'll poke around. Excellent. Thank you. Any more public comment? Yeah. Anyone? I think you're here for the next meeting, right? You don't want to make any public comment for finance? <laughs> Thank you. No. <laughs> Okay. Sorry, what did you say? Well, this is the finance meeting, so we're, we're, this is not the council meeting. Council starts at we'll 7. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. You're in the right yeah. spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, that probably wraps it up for this meeting. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Uh, second. second. Okay. All in favor of adjourning it, we adjourn. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay.